Uh, right, the wild weather is set to continue this week with more thunderstorms likely across the coming days. NIWA forecaster Chris Brandolino joins us. Uh, Chris, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Good morning. So do we know yet, or how, do, how are we going to know whether this morning was definitely another tornado? Yeah, oftentimes, obviously, video would help. Um, absent that, though, what can be done is you, you survey the damage, and you can see from a science perspective, is the damage kind of in a straight line or in a kind of uniform fashion, or is it more spread? and that can determine if the winds were swirling, which would be a tornado, or is what we call straight line wind damage. So basically that's a big downdraft or big puff of wind from the thunderstorm that just goes through and creates the damage. You can have tornado-like damage without a tornado. Right. Yeah. So we've seen mm -hmm. what, what could be yep. three tornadoes yep. in three days. Yeah. Is that unusual? It is unusual. It's not unheard of. We average about seven to ten moderate to strong tornadoes per year across Aotearoa, New Zealand. There's a lot of variability. I mean, some years will be active, e.g. now, um, and some, you know, er, or some years, I should say, will be inactive. So there's a lot of variability year to year, or even decade to decade, but that's kind of the average over the long term. Okay, so are we in a particularly active tornado yeah. season right well, now? Well, we're, we're in an active weather situation right now where that the war air is warm and humid. I mean, yesterday was 27 degrees in Hawke's Bay, it was 24 in Auckland. If you live in the upper North Island, it feels like summer, so that's providing the kind of the fuel, the juice mm. for thunderstorms. So you, you need warm, humid, moist air. That is a good start for a thunderstorm. And then in order to get a tornado, you need air to basically what we had described as wind shear. So imagine you're in a hot air balloon, you're at the ground ready to take off and the wind is coming from the north, that's today. But as you ascend up and up and up, the wind actually changes direction. So what you're looking at now here are the odds of thunderstorms this week. And today certainly notice the odds on Friday decrease and I'll complete that analogy in a second. <laughs> but um, today certainly is a high risk for or moderate risk for some thunderstorms in terms of getting at least one lightning strike. Right. So as you're going higher and higher, higher, back to the hot air balloon, the wind goes from north to northwest and, and, and it also increases. And that causes shear, that causes the spin. So if you have this wind shear, in an environment where there's thunderstorms, that can often lead to these uh, tornadic type situations. And why are they over so quickly? They come, they're so <coughs> full just, and then Yeah, that's gone. the nature of a tornado. It typically lasts minutes. Um, they don't last very long. They're, is, they're very short-lived. Is there anything, because the, the thing with, I guess, cyclones and, and flooding is that generally that's predicted and you can do things to try and mm. prevent damage but these areas that have been hit by tornadoes is there anything you can do to, to know when <coughs> they're gonna hit? Uh, yeah as a meteorologist you're watching the observations you're looking at radar um, there's a thing called Doppler radar so Doppler radar can actually look inside the clouds the thunderstorms and it can tell it it can, can tell if the air is moving in this, if it's spinning, if, it's, if there's rotation. Mm -hmm. And if that is seen, that can be a harbinger of a tornado. Um, doesn't guarantee it, but it's really, it's Mother Nature giving us a tell that, look, something's spinning here, pay attention. So it isn't, to your point, it's not like an, a tropical cyclone where you can see it coming days away, kind of get ready for it. With thunderstorms and tornadoes, like we're going to see more thunderstorms today, which I can talk to in a second. Mm. It's knowing that, look, the atmosphere is ripe, the conditions are favorable, Tough to say exactly where that will be. We can kind of shrink the area, but we can't shrink it that much in terms of areas where thunderstorms are likely and where weather is likely to be, I guess, highest risk for, say, nasty type thunderstorms. Yeah, and because we have seen them restricted to certain streets, that would be quite, quite hard to yeah, predict. Yeah, yeah. Um, what can you tell us, though, about predictions in terms of an extended forecast? Yeah, so starting with today for the North Island, we do have to be really mindful. There's another round of thunderstorms coming. Uh, there will be some showers and thunderstorms, I think, for Northland, Auckland, um, Got to watch the Teddenaki region, Manawatu, Wellington. Late this morning into the afternoon, we got to watch out for more heavy type thunderstorms. So that's something. And there's so much wind in the atmosphere, Mel, that when you get these thunderstorms, they can really do a really efficient job thunderstorms at focusing the wind energy in a small area. And that's where you get these kind of wind damage, whether it's a tornado or not. Uh, then we'll see these showers and thunderstorms continuing during the week. They'll be gradually easing, but still with us. And the, this animation you're looking at here with the nice, pretty colors. After a nice weekend, fingers crossed, Saturday and Sunday, we have to watch next week to the north. There could be a rain-bearing system coming from the north. 
That's important because when weather systems come from the north, they have a lot of fuel in terms of rain and water vapor, and there could be another potential heavy rain producer, not so much localized like thunderstorms, but more widespread um, sometime next week. It's not etched in stone, but something we have to bear in mind for the first day, few days of next week. Good time to keep across those forecasts since it's, it seems to be pretty uh, unpredictable out there. 20 minutes past seven. Thank you so much. Thanks That's for having me. Neil forecaster Chris Brandolino.